Elasticity is defined as a measure of responsiveness of quantity demanded or quantity supplied due to changes in any of its determinants. In simpler words, you're analyzing to what extent consumers or suppliers respond to changes in their particular variables. As in how much you supply more, how much you supply less, or how much consumers buy more, buy less, depending upon the nature of commodity and the prices. So elasticity covers price elasticity of demand, and within that you have income elasticity of demand, you have cross price elasticity of demand, and you have price elasticity of supply. So first we begin with price elasticity of demand. Price elasticity of demand is defined as how sensitive quantity demanded is due to changes in price of a good. Remember whenever we are talking about price elasticity of demand, we measure quantity demanded. We do not measure quantity supplied. So it is computed via a formula percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. So whatever the result, the whatever value obtained, it is regarded as a negative value, but we don't mention the negative sign with it. That is because of law of demand. It's very clear. Law of demand says there is an inverse relationship or a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. So that's how we assume that the value is negative, but we do not put the sign with it. Besides this, it's important to remember that if the nature of a commodity is elastic, so the demand curve would be flat. And if the commodity is inelastic, the demand curve, the shape of the curve would be steep. So you have two graphs in front of you. The first one covers inelastic case, another one covers elastic demand curve case. Demand is said to be inelastic if quantity demanded is not so sensitive to changes in price level. As in, when price increases, quantity demanded decreases, but just a little bit. So here, you're analyzing the market of petrol. You see that there is a big increase in price of petrol, but there is a small change in quantity demanded. So first here we apply the law of demand. Increase in price leads to a decrease in quantity demanded. But in elasticity we measure how much quantity demanded has changed. Has it changed a lot or less? So we know petrol is regarded as a necessity good and there are very like there are not good substitutes or you can say there are less perfect substitutes of petrol. So even if price rises a lot, you will not stop consuming petrol. You might consume a little bit less or if the price decreases, you might consume a little bit more. But quantity demanded will not change whole a lot due to the nature of this commodity. And also, if you notice, the shape of the demand curve is steep. So whenever we're covering the case of inelastic demand curve, the shape will be steeper. Coming towards another case of elastic demand curve, we're analyzing the market of pastas. So pastas, with respect to Pakistan, they are not considered as a necessity good. We generally regard it wheat, bread as a necessity good as compared to pastas. So demand is said to be elastic if quantity leads to changes in price level whole a lot. As in the quantity is sensitive to changes in price level. So even if prices rise a little bit, quantity demanded will be changed a lot. So if you compare the arrows, the price has changed a little bit as compared to a change in quantity demanded. 
that is due to the nature of commodity pastas are not considered as a necessity good but for countries like maybe vietnam where they only eat pastas so for that scenario the curve the shape of the curve will be inelastic but here it's elastic whenever the curve is elastic you will notice the shape of demand curve will be flat and as elasticity rises it becomes more flat but if the curve is inelastic the curve becomes steeper elasticity depends upon several determinants the first one is availability of clothes substitutes so the more substitutes a good possess the more elastic demand curve would be because it's easier for consumers to switch for other substitute goods if price of one commodity rises for example pepsi and coke they will have elastic demand curve but let's say eggs eggs have an elastic demand curve because there is no substitute for eggs or petrol there is no good substitute for petrol even water there is no substitute for it so availability of clothes substitutes it's a very important element and it affects elasticity second one is necessities versus luxury again elasticity varies if commodity is necessity or luxury so luxury commodities they have elastic demand curve as in the demand is sensitive to changes in price level for example luxury cars porsche bmw or your personal jet or any latest expensive technology the demand curve would be elastic but for necessity goods the demand curve would be inelastic as in a change in price will not affect quantity demanded a lot like eggs water bread petrol or any necessity good but remember luxuries and necessities they vary on consumer preferences and also varies nation to nation for example a country like pakistan wheat is considered as a necessity rather than rice but for china rice is a necessity good for vietnam pasta is a necessity good for arab countries olives and bread this is a necessity good so it varies as per culture and nation and then definition of market so there is a broad market category and there is a narrow market category so you can look at the same good in both markets the change is only in your focus so broad market category they have in elastic demand curve for example we know there is no substitute for food there is no substitute for clothes there is no substitute for shoes but we can analyze the market of food clothing and shoes in narrow market as well so in narrow market the demand curve will be elastic because of availability of close substitutes for example food there are different types of food if price of meat rises you can buy vegetables you can buy chicken you can buy lentils so there are many substitutes or clothes there are variety of clothing even variety of shoes like you have sneakers you have joggers you have sandals so the focus switches within the definition of market and finally time horizon you know in economics there is a short run response and a long run response there is two time scenarios so in short run the goods have less elastic demand because people have less time to respond to changes whereas in long run goods have elastic demand because people can take time reacting to changes for example if price of petrol rises today this will affect quantity demanded in short run slightly but the demand curve will be elastic in long run because in long run maybe you can buy a fuel efficient car or you can live nearby your workplace so that's how elasticity varies with respect to these four determinants 
there are five types of curves with respect to price elasticity of demand we have covered the first two the first one is inelastic demand the, the shape of the demand curve will be steep and the coefficient is less than one the second one is elastic demand you notice the shape of the curve is flat as I mentioned as the elasticity is greater the curve becomes flatter and as the elasticity gets smaller the curve is steeper so for elastic demand the coefficient value is always greater than one unit elastic the coefficient value is equal to one perfectly inelastic the coefficient is zero and the shape of the demand curve it's vertical straight line and for perfectly elastic the coefficient is infinity and the shape of the curve is horizontal so you might be thinking what is this coefficient value remember coefficient helps to determine the elasticity as in whether the demand is elastic or it's inelastic so how do we prove it i've given you a case so again we're analyzing the market of petrol and we know petrol is regarded as a necessity good and also there are not much good substitutes of it so petrol has an inelastic demand curve as in there is a big change in price which leads to a small change in quantity demanded so i have given you some hypothetical values and let's see how does its coefficient value is less than one so as we notice there is a big change in price so it's 30 percent change in price and just a 10 percent change in quantity demanded so if we divide this it's the value is 0 0.33 something so this value is less than one hence proved the coefficient value for inelastic demand curve will be less than one for elastic demand you know quantity demanded is sensitive to changes in prices as in a small change in prices leads to a big change in quantity demanded and that is due to the nature of product it's either a luxury good or it's not a necessity or the time frame is long so here we are analyzing the market of pastas now remember there is not much maths but there will be a little bit maths in elasticity because you have to calculate the coefficient value to know whether it's elastic inelastic so again let's see for elastic the coefficient value is greater than one how do we prove it so we have this formula so in this scenario you notice there is a small change in price so there is a 10 percent change in price which leads to a big change in quantity demanded that is 40 percent change so if you divide the value is 4 and 4 is greater than 1 that's how the coefficient value of elastic demand is greater than 1 but what if the percentage change in quantity demanded is equal to percentage change in price well that's called unit elastic demand so for unit elastic remember there are no perfect examples but generally the commodity is not even necessity good and it's not either a luxury good it's something in between for example cookies you have snacks or you have chocolates usually these commodities fit in perfectly so the coefficient value is equal to one because the change will be same at each point for example if there is a 10 percent rise or a 20 percent rise in prices of cookies so you will buy 20 percent less that's how it works you have the hypothetical values you divide the answer will be one so when the answer is one you know 
that it's unit elastic. So here you notice the demand curve is vertical straight line. That means a change in price will have no effect on quantity demanded. So the scenario is perfectly inelastic demand. It will never be called as inelastic. It will be called as perfectly inelastic demand and the coefficient value will always be zero. So what are the examples of commodities here? So generally it's the products you rely on to live like people who are diagnosed with diabetes, they required to consume insulin regardless of the price or if anyone is reliant on any medication to live the demand curve would be perfectly inelastic too or even for water the demand curve would be perfectly inelastic we need water to live so regardless price decreases increases quantity demanded will be constant it will be fixed so you can see the graph we are analyzing the market for insulin. So if the price increases from P1 to P2, what do you notice? There will be no change in quantity demanded. Quantity demanded stays same. So how do we prove it? You notice there is a 30% let's say change in price. And there is no change in quantity demanded. So we put zero in that area and as you divide the answer is zero so that's how the coefficient value for inelastic for perfectly inelastic demand is zero again this is an extreme case where the demand curve is horizontal remember i mentioned the higher the elasticity the curve will be flatter and in this scenario, as it's an extreme case, the curve is horizontal. So the point is that you cannot change the price. The firm cannot change the price regardless quantity increases or decreases. And that is due to the nature of commodity. Here I'm taking the example of olives. Generally in Pakistan, people do not prefer to consume olives. So if the firm increases the price of olives, the demand would be zero. No one would prefer to buy it. But if they choose to decrease the price of olives, the demand would be infinite and they won't be able to meet the demand. So that's how the concept is. You can have a lot of examples here, but remember it can be any commodity which you will not prefer to buy if they rise the prices. But if the prices fall, everyone would buy that commodity. So, as there is no change in price, we have zero. And let's suppose there is a 10% change in quantity demanded. So, if you divide anything by zero, the answer is infinity, which depicts unlimited. So, they cannot change the price because they won't be able to meet the demand.